Knox, and I'm really grateful to uh, to my Knox sir for inviting me here. Uh, being a population geneticist, uh, when this pandemic arrived, we started to think whether some population they are uh, susceptible to it, and some population they might not susceptible to it. Because, and this is the reason uh, why we entered into this area and we started to work on the on the population history and population relation with the with the COVID nineteen. So, as we all know that this virus is very notorious. There is continuous positive selection on this virus. We cannot mutate so fast uh, to catch it, but we have some other measurements. And uh, slowly, slowly, when we started looking some of the genes, then uh, we also started doing uh, uh, the zero surveillance, the water surveillance, and many other things came into our mind. And slowly, slowly, we also learned from the international community. And slowly, slowly, we built up a new area that. Uh, Connects the uh, the genomics with the COVID nineteen, and if we compare the both of the uh, both of the waves in India, we see that the the first wave was not so hard. There was very strict early lockdown for that, and this. But the region is that this wave took a lot of time to diminish, and then public was very much serious, and the second wave. as you all know that all of our one of relatives or the family member has uh, unfortunately expired from this so there was no early lockdown and the virus there were several new virus variants alpha beta and delta the delta and alpha was the major driver for the indian uh, case and public was also a bit careless we have done a survey around 1200 people they are the between 32 40 years and they all are graduate people and surprisingly most of them they either relied on fake news or they did not take it seriously and this was also one of the region which helped the second wave to speed up so if we look to the cases classification in india we see that most of the people they are asymptomatic either with the mild symptom and there are very limited number of severe cases and out of the severe cases there are very few critical cases but because the number of the infection is too much high that our health system is usually gets overloaded and that is how uh, we always uh, in the second second wave the problem was much more severe because of the large number of infections and unfortunately we have huge number of diabetes two patients around 80 millions and also around 50 more than 50 millions of cardiovascular diseases and they are higher, they have more higher susceptibility to covid so with these problems uh if we compare as we have uh, learned from the yesterday's presentation that still india did a bit better comparing to the any european nation so initially we have looked some of the genes and some of the questions which came to our mind was if there are some people they are getting severely affected they have to go to the hospital or they have to uh, go to the to the to the oxygen and some of people they are even getting infected they are not even able to notice that they are infected with the virus and they are getting better within few days so by considering this factor we have asked us that if we can identify any ancestry specific genomic variant or genomic segment which is associated with the covid-19 susceptibility and this is if we see this uh, picture on the right side here uh, the most of the regions of the world they have their own ancestry components some of the ancestry component is shared between two of the continents or subcontinents but overall if we see the uh, the heterozygosity from africa to to the sahul we see that there is a gradient and this gradient shows that modern human has originated to africa and then moved to different parts of the world and there is limited gene flow between these uh, between various subcontinents so how these local ancestries and also the shared ancestries has affected the covid-19 susceptibility 
So if we look to the maternal ancestry components, there are three components. One is related with Western Eurasian. Another is purely South Asian, the indigenous South, South Asian. And the third one is East Eurasian. So Indian ancestry is between East and West Eurasians. And the West Eurasian is to the fringes of the Northwestern part and, and the Northern part. And also to the Himalayan fringes has the ancestry which is related with the Eastern Eurasia. And we, from the initial data and also from the, from the further data which, are, which were coming up, we came to know that somehow the ancestry which is related with the Eastern Eurasia, they have less susceptibility to COVID-19. So we first looked to the AC2 gene because the initial researchers have suggested that this is one of the receptor of the human is uh, one of the receptor gene for the for the coronavirus and possibly the decreased level of the ac2 expression reduces the severity of the diseases and moreover the genetic structure of ac2 haplotypes among the south asian people was also not known to us so we wanted to know the haplotype structure of this gene among South Asian, how this haplotype structure is shared, and if there is some mutation related haplotype which could protect us or could increase our susceptibility. So first we have done the neighbor joining analysis based on the haplotype data. And surprisingly, as if we put South Asia with the East and West Eurasian population, South Asia always cluster with the uh, with the West Eurasian population comparing to the East Eurasian population. Whereas here we see that the South Asian are clustering together with the Southeast Asian island mainland population and Siberian population. So there seems that there are several haplotypes in this gene which is connecting South Asia with the Southeast Asia or East Asian population. And also the, the, the FSTs and the comparison of the populations showed that there might be a common uh, related ancestry. There might be some haplotypes which is connecting South Asia more strongly with the Southeast Asia or East Asia or Siberia population. So we have looked to the different ancestry components and also to the different haplotypes present for this gene. And here we see that there are three major haplotypes which has been found in this gene. We have uh, used the complete genome sequence data of 377 individuals coming from the whole world population and also verified this with the 1000 genome complete sequence data. So these were NGS data and based on the NGS data, we have extracted those related SNPs which could show some of the association. So here we have found out that there was haplotype 3 which is more widespread among South Asian and Southeast Asian, as well as East Asian population. So this has been derived by a single SNP, RS228566. And this SNP is actually uh, the, the derived haplotype via this SNP is connecting South Asia with the Southeast Asian population. And here clearly we see that this haplotype three has around 60% of the haplotypes coming from the South Asia. And probably because of this, the susceptibility of South Asian population will be more related, will be more like to the East and Southeast Asian population. It will not be like to the, uh, to the West Eurasian or European population. So further, what we have done that uh, we have use the data which was reported by the different states, the number of uh, infection as well as case fatality rate with this particular SNP which is deriving that particular haplotype. And we understood that probably this is one of the protective haplotype that is helping human to reduce their susceptibility against SARS-CoV-2. So we, if we look to the distribution of this SNP, we see that it has lowest frequency into the Maharashtra and Gujarat region, whereas it has highest frequency into the northeastern part of India. And if we look to the case fatality rate uh, in, the, uh, in the Indian map in, in, among the Indian population, we see that Maharashtra has the highest case fatality rate 
as well as the northeastern region it has uh, lowest fertility rate as well lowest case rate and uh, when we have uh, compared the uh, correlation frequency with the case frequency as well as case fertility rate we found a high level of correlation of these two with that particular snp and this snp is probably uh, protecting people uh, and also reducing the the susceptibility of a person because this uh, analysis was not done on the real covid samples there was another independent study which was done on the real covid samples they have used 297 covid positive and 253 covid negative samples and they have exactly found out they have verified our result and found out find found out that the protective allele that rs2285666 the allele which has given rise the haplotype 3 it was associated with the two fold decrease in infection risk as well as three fold decrease to develop serious disease so we have looked the another gene which is tmprss2 gene as we know that this gene also helps uh, the virus to to enter the host cell and we found out that in contrast with the ac2 haplotype structure the tmprss2 shows that the south asian cluster together with the 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 west eurasian population that is european caucasian and west asian population so this means that the host susceptibility among south asian is based on these two gene is in between southeast asian east asian and between the west eurasian population so south asian uh, uh, the susceptibility of south asian population is in between east eurasian as well as west eurasian so based on this we conclude that the the haplotype analysis based on ac2 gene shows that the south asian haplotype the haplotype 3 is more akin with the east eurasian population comparing to the west eurasian population we also establish a possibility of snp rs2285666 is associated with the protective role against covid-19 and this protective haplotype was lowest in maharashtra and highest among northeastern states that synchronize very well with the case fatality rate in overall indian population so with these two genetic analysis we have also done some zero surveillance some uh, some questionnaire to the people and slowly slowly one by one i am putting this to so as soon as the first wave has finished we started our uh, first wave uh, zero surveillance and where there we have found that the number of cases reported by the government and if we compare to the frequency of zero positivity that is very asymmetrical among the different uh, regions but still it is much more higher than the number of re cases reported and as soon as the second wave has started it was to our surprise because most of the studies that has been done into the european and american nations that they have showed that uh, after the infection the antibody level diminishes at least for after 6 months and uh, when we have measured the september to december antibodies the antibodies were present around 40% among the varanasi population and when uh, as soon as uh, the second wave has started before a uh, few days we have Uh, measured this uh, zero positivity among the varanasi population we have found that around 7% population has only now has the uh, the the antibodies uh, the zero positivity so this means that possibly the zero positivity has reduced in 90 days in 3 months and uh, the population who was once upon a time uh, was uh, not infected to the corona viruses the corona virus were able to reinfect these people as well but these people the people who have been already infected it was uh, seen that they were not able to develop very serious diseases or they were not uh, develop any uh, symptom which leads them to the hospitals and our next question was there if there is any blood group which is associated with uh, covid-19 we have done this into purvanchal region the varanasi and the neighboring districts and we found out that blood group a and blood group b was showing the similar pattern as we see into the 
normal population, but blood group O and O and AB was showing asymmetrical pattern, whereas the O blood group was showing the less number of people being infected with the COVID-19, whereas AB positive was showing several fold higher number of people infected with the COVID-19. So this means that probably haplogroup, uh, probably blood group O has some uh, some power which is uh, helping the people to reduce their susceptibility. And we have also looked to the, uh, the vaccination. When the vaccination program started, we have compared with uh, people who, have, who are naive and people who have been already infected from the coronavirus and they have recovered from the coronavirus. And we found out that the people who have uh, recovered, they developed their antibodies earlier than the naive people as well as the recovered people, they develop more than 10,000 units of antibodies comparing to the naive people who just develop less than 500 units of antibodies. And based on this, uh, when the naturally infected people, after taking vaccination dose one and vaccination dose two, uh, there is a terminology which is being used into the international community that superhuman immunity. So the person who has been infected previously and they take two doses of vaccination, they have even more than 25,000 uh, units of antibodies, which is much more higher comparing to the naive people. So uh, with the Bangladeshi collaborators, we have also uh, compared the C-reactive protein and D-dimers level among the real patients. And we have found some uh, high level of uh, uh, the, com the comparison of uh, CRP and also the D-dimers among the recovered and non-recovered people, the dead people, as well as the recovered people. And uh, recently we collaborated with the CCMB people, the Divya Tej and uh, Karthik, and uh, we have sent some samples from Varanasi region to sequence them. And they have found that uh, the breakthrough infection, the people who have been vaccinated and they have been infected with the virus is mainly derived by the Delta variant, which is asymmetrically showing a very high frequency uh, of infection among the people who have been infected after the vaccination. So uh, this is some of our publications and uh, thanks to a large number of people, I could not put pictures of everybody because there are like 75 people from different universities and colleges, but these are the major people and this is our small group working in the Department of Zoology, BHU. So thank you very much for your kind attention. I'll be happy to take any question. Thank you, sir. If there are any questions, they may be asked now. Yeah, Ganeshwar. Yeah. Yes, sir. 